Hey, welcome back to the course. So in this lecture, let's write a hello world program for our embedded board, which is based on ARM Cortex M4 processor. So now in our case, we'll start a new STM32 project. So to create a new STM32 project, go to file and then go to new and then click on STM32 project. So after that, just select this option and click next. So now you have to give a name for your project. So I'm going to give 001 hello world. And after that, the language is C. And here, targeted project type, select empty. And after that, click finish. All right, so we just created an empty hello world project. So it has added a couple of folders here. So the ink folder or include folder, which is so where we keep all our header files of our project and the source folder so where we keep all our source codes that is .c files and here you can see that the um, ide is already added three files main.c syscalls.c sysmem.c and after that important thing here is the startup code for the microcontroller so before working with any microcontroller okay doesn't matter whether it is from st or whether it is from ti or freescale or whatever it is so you should have a startup code for that microcontroller in your project. So that is very, very important. And uh, so for this lecture, we are not going to explore the startup code because that would be too early to explore. But in later sections, I have a plan to introduce writing startup file from scratch. So we'll see that later when we understand more about the microcontroller and the embedded C concept. So the main thing here, what you should observe is it has added main source file where we are going to write our code for the microcontroller. All right, now let's write a program to print the message, hello world. So for that, let's use the standard library function printf. Let me write printf, hello world. And since it's a standard library function, I have to include stdio.h. All right, so now you may be wondering how would this print work because we don't have any display or standard output device which is connected to our embedded board, right? So we don't have any monitor or we don't have an LCD which are connected to our embedded board. So how are we going to see the output then? For that, there is one solution and that solution comes from the ARM Cortex processor itself. Let's explore that. All right, now let's discuss about using printf outputs on ARM Cortex M3 or M4 or M7 based MCUs. This discussion is only applicable to microcontrollers which are based on ARM Cortex M3 plus processors, M3 or M4, M7 or higher. So this discussion will not be applicable to ARM Cortex M0 or M0 plus processors. So in that case, you will not be able to use the ARM Cortex processor's trace functionality, so which we are going to discuss in a moment. In ARM Cortex processor, we can make printf work by using the SWO pin of the SWD interface. So SWO stands for Serial Wire Output. Let's explore more on this. First of all, this is your board, right? So you have a board which is STM32F4 discovery board or nuclear board. And your board has a microcontroller, right? So let's say the microcontroller is STM32F407VG. So this is a microcontroller which is produced by ST Microelectronics. That microcontroller has a processor inside, right? Which is ARM Cortex-M4 processor, right? Now our board also has one more circuitry, so which is at the front end of the board and that we call as ST-Link V2 or V1 debug circuitry. So that is ST-Link onboard debug circuitry. So by using that debug circuitry, your PC communicates with the board. Through that debug circuitry, you actually write your program to the internal flash of the microcontroller. You read various memory locations of the microcontroller. You make processor run, you make processor stop. 
So all those debug related activity you do by taking help of this debug circuitry, which is present on the board. Debug circuitry will talk to your PC over a USB connection. So that is a pin called SWO pin, which is coming all the way from ARM Cortex M processor and it is connected to the debug circuitry. So the printf actually works over this SWO pin. Let's explore further. So for that, I'm going to zoom this ARM Cortex M4 processor. Let's consider only ARM Cortex M4 processor. So inside the ARM Cortex M4 processor, there is a unit or a peripheral called ITM unit. ITM stands for Instrumentation Trace Microcell Unit. So this is inside the processor. So the ITM is an optional application driven trace source that supports printf style debugging to trace operating system and application events. And it can also be used to generate diagnostic system information. So this unit is only available in ARM Cortex M3 or above processors. So it is not available in ARM Cortex M0 processor. And to debug the processor, so debug means if you want to read the memory location, if you want to read the processor related register, if you want to make the processor halt, or if you want it to run. So if you want to do all these activities, then we do that using the debug interface. The debug interface, what we are using here is SWD. So SWD stands for Serial Wire Debug, which is a two-wire protocol for accessing the ARM debug interface. SWD works over SWD connector, and that SWD connector has three pins, in which two pins are used for debug, and one pin is used for trace. So trace means in order to get the trace-related information from the processor. Let's explore some more points about SWD debug interface. Now the serial wire debug, it is a two wire protocol for accessing ARM debug interface. So it is part of the ARM debug interface specification V5 and it is an alternative to JTAG. The physical layer of SWD consists of only two lines. One is called SWDIO, which is a bidirectional data line which carries debug related data, and SWD clock, a clock which is driven by the host. So, in our board, the host is actually the ST link circuitry. So, SWDIO, uh, which is a data line which actually carries the debug related commands. So, like for example, when you insert a breakpoint in your IDE, so that information will be sent over SWD IO data line to the processor. So if you want to stop the processor from the IDE, then that information is actually carried over the SWD IO line with the help of SW clock to the processor. So in order to talk to the processor, you can use these two pins of the SWD interface, SWD IO and SW clock. So both are managed by the ST-Link circuitry, which is present on your boards. So by using SWD interface, you should be able to program MCU's internal flash. You can access memory regions, add breakpoints, stop or run the CPU. So other good thing about SWD is you can use the serial wire viewer for your printf statements for debugging. So as I said, SWD comes with only two pins which are used for debug, but there is one optional pin that is what we call as SWO, which we can use for printf functionality. So now there is also another debug interface, which is called as JTAG. The difference between JTAG and SWD is JTAG actually needs more pins than SWD. JTAG was the traditional mechanism for debug connections for ARM7 or ARM9 family, but with Cortex M family, ARM introduced the serial wire debug interface. SWD is designed to reduce the pin count required for debug from the four used by JTAG down to two. So in addition, SWD interface provides one more pin called SWO, which is used for single wire viewing, which is a low cost tracing technology. 
let's move forward so if i zoom this itm unit further so what you see is a fifo or you can call it as a buffer or a register it's a hardware buffer which is there inside the itm unit so now all you need to do is write the printf data into this fifo so that fifo is actually connected to the swo pin which is coming out of the processor and it is coming all the way to your debug circuitry which is present on the board right so the moment your printf writes into this fifo that messages will actually come over the swo pin and you then capture it that's it so in the ide there is a provision to capture this swo pin so remember that not all ides support this feature of capturing swo pin so but fortunately stm32 cube id and true studio so those ids actually support these functionalities so swo pin is connected to st link circuitry of the board and can be captured using our debug software so let's see that in a moment how to do that but this is the idea behind how printf works in arm cortex mx processor so there is itm unit and it has a pifo and your printf somehow should write into that pifo and that pifo is connected to the swo pin and through that you actually get that message back to the id all right so now in our application so you have to do some settings or you have to add some code in order to make your printf writes into that itm's pifo so for that you have to add a small code snippet so that code you can get in our repository so you just go to the git repository and here just copy this code so once you copy this code so what you have to do is you have to open the project and go to syscalls.c so in the syscall.c so after this hash include just paste that code all right so and after that just save this file so this is actually the implementation of printf like feature using arm cortex itm functionality and this function will not work for arm cortex m0 or m0 plus so if you are using cortex m0 then you can use semi hosting feature of open ocd so which i covered in a separate video and this is a code what we added and which actually writes into that fifo so now let's go to the syscalls.c and here you should identify a function called write here is a function called write so what you have to do is you have to comment out this line so instead of that call this function itm send char so just call that function here and give this argument right so instead of calling this you are just calling our itm message sending function so that's all you have to do and after that you are ready to test this application all right so what's happening here is that so when you call a printf function which is actually a standard library function so the printf function is actually implemented in c standard library right so the printf implementation then calls lower level function called write so that write is actually implemented in syscalls.c and in that write we actually call our api itm send char in order to populate the itm's fifo and that's how we actually divert the printf to the itm unit and then we get the trace through the swo pin suppose if you have lcd then you can call lcd send char here so if you have uart then you can call uart send char here so now after that in order to test this application you have to first compile it isn't it so that what we call as cross compilation 